Hello, everyone, and welcome to Under the Surface. Here we have Kayla George as our guest today. I'm Annalie Maley, and I am so, 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 so excited to have you here to talk about all things your life. We have Pearl as a special guest today, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having us, sister. <laughs> what have you been up to today? Have you had an off day? Oh, uh, well, I got back. Um, I had a bit of a fill up my cup week in Cairns um, just because I've had Pearl by myself for the last month. I'm just waiting for my sister-in-law to come down this week. Um, so, yeah, Chris was like, you know what, go fill up your cup, be with family for a little bit, which was amazing. So um, the week was very refreshing. Uh, but last night my flight was delayed by three hours, so I landed <laughs> after midnight, got to sleep at two, had to wake up at six to prep Pearl and myself for training at oh. 745. So kind of defeat the purpose. But, um, yeah, today was more just staying awake for yeah. training and then just doing a bit of life admin before I came here to speak to you. Oh, that's so nice. I love those weekends for you. Not the delayed flight, but yeah. everything else okay. around that. For people that don't know, I actually didn't say this in the intro, but Pearl is Kayla's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl is not uh, a bracelet. Pearl is <laughs> Kayla's daughter. So when we're talking about Pearl, you might get to see her in um, the video footage. Um, but when when you talk about those weekends when you get to go away and kind of like fill up your cup and just be you, how important is that, especially at this point in a season, for you to have the opportunity to go and do that? Yeah, it's definitely, um, I mean, Pearl's been life-changing for me. All the mothers out there or people that have children um, will understand that. And um, I really thought I loved my dogs and I, I still really <laughs> do. But having a human baby or as Izzy Chilcott says, a skin puppy yes. um, is definitely <laughs> um, completely life-changing for the better. And um, I've actually just forgotten the question. <laughs> I'm rambling and forgot the question. No, that's perfect. It was just talking about like how important that is for you to get that time. Oh, yeah. So you answered so, the yeah, question. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it is, it's important because um, now with Pearl, I have to have really good time management. I was pretty good before. Um, but I definitely, you know, before Pearl, it was more just be outside with the dogs or go to the beach with the dogs, dog park with the dogs yeah. um, or a bit of online shopping, just, you know, break up the basketball headspace and just yeah. make sure I step away from that just to stay sane. <laughs> yes. Um, because, you know, us overthinkers, we're going to overthink. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, girl. Um, but with Pearl, like I still like to do that with the dogs, but it kind of depends on, you know, has she been fed? Is she going to have a nap or is mm. she settled? Can I put her in the carrier and we go for a bit of a stroll with the dogs? So, um, yeah, I mean, it has altered it a little bit, but um, at the same time, it's probably just sharpened up my time management skills. Yeah, you've always been kind of on top of everything, so I can't even imagine you being more sharper. Oh. Like you were already pretty sharp, <laughs> so even pointier. Wow, <laughs> very pointy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, um, big how, words. Yes. How does your skin puppy get along? <laughs> with the fur puppies. Yes, my skin puppy. Um, <laughs> she. Uh, and the fur puppy, fur puppies, fur babies get along really well. Um, mm -hmm. They're not allowed to lick her face, but I let them sniff her head and they can, you know, play with their feet and hands and stuff and, and have a good sniff. Mm -hmm. um, and they're always, I mean, when I was home in Cairns and I had the four of them there with me and I would feed Pearl on the couch and they'd all be sitting around me. It was like a big pack of wolves or wannabe wolves in the snag <laughs> yeah. and, and Pearly just having a good feed and they were just like, you know, protecting us yes. from whatever was going to interrupt the feed. Yeah. Um, but no, everyone gets along really well, which is what you want. Yeah. Big happy family. Exactly, exactly. Context, Kayla has two sausage dogs <laughs> and two huskies. So the wolf pack is kind of like wolf pack-ish. <laughs> yes. Well, the huskies, I mean, the snags think that they're wolves. So that's where that comes from. Yeah, always yes. the other way around. Yes. Um, so I would like to ask you a couple questions about you as a human before we talk about basketball Whoa. things because there's so much there. Like we look at your WNBL career and your WNBA career and you as an Olympian and Europe and, God, the list kind of goes on. Um but I, I really like I want to start by you as a human and the way that you kind of operate and go about your life. Like if people haven't met you, you're just like this bright light of shining positive energy. And it, it really is true. Like uh, the people that do interact with you, they usually walk away from those interactions like, wow, okay, that's great. You know, like that's, <laughs> oh, that's and that's, nice. that's kind of a general consensus. So I want to wind back to you as a kid. So what were you like as a younger kid? What was young Kayla like and how would your family describe you? Uh, exactly like I am, just with less wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I think I was just like a big loving, crazy kid that 
I mean, I don't think I'm very different now. I even like I go back to my hometown and people are like, oh, you're the same person. I'm like, why would I change? Like, <laughs> yeah. why? Because I've done some stuff on my basketball resume. Who cares? I mean, yeah. I care, but like I'm not going to change my whole demeanor and personality. And um, I just, yeah, I was always just really crazy and loud and um, like to make people laugh and Oh, Pearlie's just having a good yeah. yarn over there. <laughs> You've got to give her the mic soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess, yeah, very similar to as I am now, which mm-hmm. is a pretty simple answer, but. No, I love it. Yeah. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Mount Barker in South Australia. Um, so I represented South Australia country. I'm like 30 minutes from the, well, they'd classify the metro yep. country line. Um, so yeah, Mount Barker, Adelaide Hills, played for the Eastern Mavericks oh, uh, growing nice. up. So uh, their logo is a basketball with a moustache and a cowboy hat. <laughs> So I think that is a big reason why my most used emoji is the cowboy hat emoji. <laughs> nah, just channeling my inner maverick every time I message someone. Oh, Pearly doesn't like that emoji. Oh, no, she doesn't oh, like she, the basketball She's emoji. about to be a part of the podcast. Oh, Here we go. yes. This is the moment we've been oh. waiting for. Here she is. Oh, oh. <laughs> Pearly Hello. girl. Hello. Hi, darling. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at the arms. She's, she's like, like oh. I, I heard you talking about a basketball with a mustache. I don't know what's going on here, but I need to be in on it. <laughs> she's got a couple bats in the cave. Let's not take any photos, <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> she's due for a bath. I had to come here to the podcast. Happy to chat, but she needs a bath, guys. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Um bit of a milk massage. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> my brain. This is the funniest thing. Uh, she was... Okay, wait, let me my where was I? Okay, yes. Basketball with a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um after because I remember when we I, I was asking you questions um about where you grew up and I remember you at one point saying that you had moved overseas, no? So you you went to North Queensland and then what what was your kind of from South Australia, what was your next steps? Like where did you grow up after that? Yeah, so um, going a bit backwards from where you're saying, so my mum and dad separated and my dad got a work opportunity in Fiji. So I actually spent like a fair bit of time growing up in Fiji in primary school and then we came back. Um, there was a stint in Brisbane for a couple of years because my mum's mum passed away. She just needed to get out of Adelaide. Then we moved back to Adelaide. Um, and so from there, went to the AOS and then played for the Lightning, then played for Logan, then moved overseas, then came back, there played for go. Fire. So yeah. that's when that all kind of, yeah. yeah. And then back overseas again to Hungary, to Sopron, where a couple of Aussies are now, and Alice and Ezzy, and then back to Townsville again and now with the boomers that's actually crazy when you because you kind of just spit that out all so fast like that is actually insane like when you really break it down out of all the places that you've been um but I I do want to ask you about kind of when you got into basketball do you remember any sort of defining moment as like oh this is something that I would like to do or were you just always like I'm tall I might try this sport like how did that kind of come about yeah so um at the time that I kind of started dabbling in sport I was always really long and lanky and tall um and I always call myself a big fish in a small pond in the Adelaide Hills (laughs) Mount Barker um (laughs) so but I could I was pretty coordinated was not anymore anymore. (laughs) um no (laughs) Damn it, losing coordination. It's like Benjamin Button, but backwards. What? Um, Yeah, so I actually was a bit of a netballer. Uh, I started as, uh, yeah, goal shooter, goal attack. um, And then when I was nine, um, a basketball coach approached my mum and was like, hey, um, your daughter's pretty tall. Would you like to try basketball? And so my very first basketball game was on a concrete court. Mind you, my shins would scream now if you ask me to do that now. Um, And it was was for the Zodiacs. (laughs) Uh, under 10s team and I really enjoyed it and then um, I have an older sister I also have a younger sister through my dad's new marriage but uh, my older sister at the time mum being a single mum it was just really hard for her to just take us to all these sports that we wanted to play so at one point in time mum's like hey Kayla like can you just choose for a while between basketball and netball and I was like all right I'll choose basketball (laughs) and I'm really glad I did I really love that I could move all over the court this is my my young brain I was like oh I can run everywhere and anyone can shoot (laughs) I don't have to stand right yeah and so I mean I haven't looked back so far so that was pretty good decision at ripe old age of nine wasn't it (laughs) nine-year-old you was you know she was on (laughs) she knew she 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 got some things going there although I, I would like probably have you know gone as far as I could have been netball I reckon yeah. I was I've always had that sporty drive so I think it was either that or maybe a bit of beach volleyball I don't know who knows <laughs> that's actually so funny I could see you as a beach volleyball player as well thank you I appreciate I reckon that. you could figure that out yeah, well, yeah. yeah. yeah maybe <laughs> younger you thinking about like the career that you I, I don't even want to say that you you have had because like 
it's just continuing to grow. Like you're not stopping anytime soon. You continue to go success after success after success. Your younger self, did you have those goals and aspirations as, I don't know, like maybe not a nine-year-old, but like maybe as you moved into the Institute and um, more into that more kind of serious area, is this kind of something you saw for yourself? Yeah, Honestly, and I actually don't think I answered your question before, like was there a defining moment? And there really has never been a defining moment where I was like, oh, yeah, like this is what I'm going to do. It was just like I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to keep doing it and working hard and just hopefully do it. Like that was my goal. It was never like a moment where I was like, ta-da, oh, my God, I want to do this. It was just like, well, that's obviously that's what I'm working towards. Yeah. Um, But the goals that I had as a teen or like before I went to the AIS, I actually didn't even know about the AIS. My biggest goal when I was like coming through the ranks as a junior was, oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh, agreed. Me. I was like, oh, my gosh, I really want to play in the ABA team for the Eastern Mavericks, the senior women's side. Oh, my gosh, that would be the best if I could make that team. And I think my first game was when I was like 14, yeah. turning 15. Checks so this, out. Yeah, so that was cool. And I was like, oh, there's an AOS. What's that about? Yeah. Um, but my goals, like once I realised, you know, there was more to life than living in Mount Barker and like the bigger mm-hmm. world of basketball, um, I really wanted to play for the Opals at an Olympics at a World Cup. Um, I wanted to play in Europe. I wanted to play in the WNBA and obviously win championships wherever I went and obviously play in the WNBL. Um, Little goals stem off that. They're just the big ones. Um, To this day I've done everything on that list except for win an Olympic medal Mm -hmm. and come back after a baby, like physically having one myself. My last two kind of goals um, in my career from when I was a teenager setting some really serious goals for myself. Um, and like, what a blessing. Like I never, ever would have thought I might get emotional. Oh my God, eh, I'm too tired. I'm just, I haven't had sleep. Gosh. No, it's go. Like, I'm I've cried here multiple my times. My tear ducts, like I've got an issue. <laughs> um, so I never, ever would have thought like to call myself a dual Olympian back when I was, you know, coming through the AIS, the bigs were just, there was just so many in front of me. Like mm-hmm. we're talking Emma Randall, Holly Grimer, Susie was still playing at that point, Lauren was still playing. You know, there was just so many. Nat Porter was still in the mix. Like there was so many in my position and I was like, oh, my gosh, just to even make an Olympics in my career, in my lifetime as a baller would be insane. Um, And now I'm pushing for, you know, my third Olympics to to leave the game potentially as a triple Olympian would just be beyond my wildest dreams. And it's almost like I've got more drive every time. It never wavers because just because you make one, it doesn't mean anything. You've really got to like push yourself even more. Um, And, you know, as an athlete, like you never ever stop wanting to learn and wanting to grow and wanting to better yourself. And a young girl asked me once like what the secret was to doing what I do and the level of success I've gotten to. And I, I oh, I mean, yeah, tell me about it. And yeah. I said to her, I said, honestly, you just never stop yeah. learning and growing and pushing yourself to be better. Because even at my age of 33, I still. <laughs> 23. I, uh, 23, yeah. yes, 13, <laughs> act 13. I still, I still want to get better and I still want to learn and I still like absorb information because you can never know it all. You can never yeah. be like, you know, even the best of the best. Like LeBron would still want to learn and absorb and, you know, yeah. Lauren Jackson in her heyday, you know, she still wants to learn, absorb and get better every day. That's That was the goal um, for me to just always get better and I think she really she really liked that Um that response when she asked that yeah. question. So yeah. I was like, do you get it? Yeah, she's got it. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's on there. Yeah. I love that because when, I mean, I'm, I, we talk about role models, right, and a lot of the time role models don't even know that they are role models. Yeah. Um, but I think about the WNBL and Australian basketball and I see you as one of the, the staples of you know, Australian women's basketball, not just in your career, but in careers to come. Like we look at the things that you've achieved and that you're still working towards. And, you know, I would put you in that category with LJ and oh, wow. um, Thank you. like, you that's know huge. what I mean? Like that's just something that I've always thought. And I think that when we look at athletes that continue to be successful, it, it kind of is that kind of constant drive that never really stops. No, And I guess like my question to you is like that drive and that motivation and your why, where does that come from? Like your why you do every day and why you're able to do this amazing thing we call being a professional athlete and have this amazing life as well. Like what is your why? I guess to answer that question, there's a few different progressions of of my why. And I I guess initially when I was younger, my why was, and this is getting really deep, but I think it will um, resonate with a lot of people um, because in society I think that there's like a real, not an issue, but there's a real sense of this, was to get my dad to notice me. Yeah. Um, Mum and dad had separated. He was, he'd moved away for work. Um, 
and I just wanted him to be proud and I wanted him to see me. Yeah. So I felt like, oh, if I make this team my dad, I can get to tell my dad and he can be proud of me. Yeah. Although like talking to him now in our later years, he was like, I've always been proud of you. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'd love to hear it a bit more, dad. Yeah. He does yeah. now. But back yeah. in the day, I mean, there was a lot of hurt from the divorce for, for him as well. So, um, you know, he probably struggled to get those emotions out to me and we were apart a lot, you know, in my teenage years um, because he lived in Fiji um, working. So a lot of my drive was, yes, I can't wait to make this team so I can tell dad. (laughs) Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, And then, like, as I got through that, it was more after that it was – and it was honestly not until after the Rio Olympics but I realised that, that that's what was my drive was to get my dad to notice me. Not that he wasn't noticing, yeah. but I just wanted him to like see me and be so proud yep. and just be, you know. The um, verbalising of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was just like so important. And I, yeah, like I said, didn't realise till after the Real Olympics, that's what my anger was there. Um, and then it was more just like the ripple effect it had on my family after that, ma- making that first Olympics, like how proud everyone was. And for, before Tokyo, my pop got to do a, a seven uh, commercial, which was really cool. And he yeah. was just so stoked. He got to have a beer with his mates at the pub down at Harndorf and they so came to him and good. filmed a commercial for the Olympics. And that was just all the ripple effect I had on my family. And now that's still my why, but she's my big why, little yeah. pearly girl. Little pearly um, girl. She just gives me such perspective on life. So it's kind of changed, but always family. Yeah. Yeah. Always family. Always family. Do you think that... Um, so I want to ask you a little bit about your wonderful husband oh, yes. and, um, having that family expanded and, you know, it, it's you and your side of the family for a long time, but then you get married and you have this wonderful love and there's, there's this beautiful family unit. What, what has expanding your family in that sense done to your kind of recognition of what family even means? Yeah. So growing up, my family were very English background, meat and three veg, like just very English. (laughs) And then I I meet Kailu and I meet a whole different culture. And I I still, to this day, I actually met a new family member on the weekend when I was there in camp in the coals. And you guys have been married for? Uh, Married eight, together 11. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So there's just so much family around, which is beautiful. And just their culture there. I mean, they're giving, hello, like (laughs) they've just given me a child. We'll get to that. Yeah, right. Um, So just, yeah, embracing that and, and embracing my new family members. And I've got brothers that I never had growing up and they are just as close as what I would call a brother, um, multiple brothers now, and that have my back and would protect me and support me and they were at our last Townsville game mm-hmm. um, on New Year's and we're making a very big ruckus. Not sure that the <laughs> Fire fans appreciate that. No, no, we'll get those same seats again. Sorry. Um, yep. <laughs> um, heckling the crowd a bit up there as they do. I have like a pack of 30 people <laughs> just like heckling the Fire crowd. But um, sorry, not sorry, but like, you know, all in good sport. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's just been an amazing 11 years just to – get to know my extended family and they've taken me on as one of their own and I've really tried my hardest to embrace their culture and I speak their language. I understand a lot of it. I try and speak it. Kyle and I speak it a lot at home, like broken English. Um, obviously, you know, when it's spoken really fast, I can understand a little bit. I've been, you know, in the family 11 years, so I do a decent job. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, always learning, always learning new language um, and just, yeah, the culture is just such a beautiful thing and I always try and just share that with people when they ask. Yeah, yeah. You like I love listening to the way that you talk about culture and family and like uh, th- what you have embraced, but then also like the way that you continue to share what that love means is really, really special. And I, I kind of think about like how much you have travelled over your career, right? Like how and for everyone listening, like being a professional athlete is really hard. You live out of a bag yeah. your whole life. Six <laughs> months to six months and especially being a professional female athlete, we mm. go six-month contracts to six-month contracts because a lot of the time we don't have the luxury of having an off-season. Mm. So what has uh, – like how have you managed to hold down this this family and this relationship and – all of this life while you're moving every six months, like how it puts some wisdom, wisdom dump us. Cause I have asked you this before. Um, but like, how did you manage having such a tight relationship with your family and your husband while you're doing so much travel with basketball? Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess it's a good time to reflect at the minute, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we have done a pretty good job, haven't we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, I, I don't even know what my answer was to you when you asked me before. <laughs> you might have to enlighten me. Um, honestly, it's not been easy, but you just have to be willing to, um, 
you know, have the respect to, you know, let your walls down a little bit and, and have constructive conversations. And, you know, Kyle and I have done a lot of long distance and that's not easy. It doesn't get easy. Even when I had to say goodbye to him last night, you know, and now he's got to say goodbye to Pearl as well, which makes it even harder. Although I do see him Tuesday when we go to town. Very nice. But, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's longer than that. More, more yeah. often than not, it's, you know, longer time apart than that. But um, I don't know, you just kind of just have to make sure you're really honest with each other and, and communicate and, and have a strong sense of who you are and, and respect, you know, the growth that you can have apart. But it's bigger growth when you're together. Um, and just the journey of being an athlete and only being able to do this for so long. And he was aware when he first started dating me, I was like, hey, this is what I'm doing in my life. And yep. you're either in or you're out because I'm going to be traveling. You either want to experience it with me or... See ya. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bye. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. Um, thanks for the passion. <laughs> <laughs> In the club, thanks for the passion club. I club passion. anyone say the word passion I know, 15 right. years. Um, so, I mean, he, I guess, chose to experience, you know, what I got to experience in the last 11 years with me and, um, yeah, credit to him. He sacrificed his career for a chunk of time there and then towards the last, back end of the last five years, he's, you know, had his own career with Clontarf, um, helping Indigenous males, you know, break the cycle and get through school and get a job after, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal um, job that he's doing up there. Um Although we just resigned for um, <laughs> recent reasons yeah. um, that we'll probably get to in a yes, short while. absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that's as probably as most as I can tell you, just, you know, just a lot of communication and, you know, luckily we have these days FaceTime and, yeah. you know, back in the day it was just email or, I mean, back in my day it was MSN <laughs> Messenger, but even before that it was, you know, a couple of emails, a couple of pen pal letters, yeah. I don't know, so we're really fortunate. <laughs> Messenger <this day>. pigeon. <laughs> right, yeah. right. I would, you know, give a letter to the, I don't know, yeah, the pigeon and the bloody <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, luckily just, you know, communication's easier with how it is these days um, technologically. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's it's not been easy. I'm not going to sit here. And a lot of people think they see my life on social, like, oh, my gosh, she's this, she's that. Everything's just so easy. Oh, she mm-hmm. got gifted a baby. How, like it's, yeah. it's what I put out there, but I'm not lying to anyone. I'm not, mm-hmm. like, living this false life. I do have a very beautiful, blessed life. And I work really hard to maintain yeah. my on and off court happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have my down moments too, you know. Um, yeah. And our marriage, like we've had to go through, uh, we've been together 11 years to grow yeah. together. Like, you know, there's growing pains. Yeah. Um, and so just being true to ourselves and and respectful to ourselves and, and pushing through some stuff because, you know, if you want to grow together, you've got to do it together. If yeah. you grow apart, that's when it doesn't work. Yeah. So, um Bit of home trains for you guys. Yeah. Uh, lovedoctor.com. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Phil. <laughs> oh, no, Dr. Phil. I geez. actually asked that question because when I had initially asked you, it's because so for people that don't know, my partner also plays in the WNBL and we get do that long distance thing. And so I was, I was like, you know, again, from the outside, we're like, you have built this amazing life for yourself. And that like some of those struggles and anxieties and things that we put ourselves through like over the career that people don't get to see, right? The things that happen that people just assume don't happen because they're like, wow, look at these people on these podiums, like yeah. how successful. When we talk about some of the things that you think um, you've ac- like overcome in your career, can you think of anything specifically that was maybe one of the harder things that you had to go through? Yeah, I, a couple come to mind and it was when um, I first – um, got cut from the, or wasn't my first cut from the Opals, but with, um, Brendan Joyce was the coach. And, um, I'd had to, you know, be really patient in my time. I'd done training camps with the Opals for five years. Um, you know, pr- like knew that I wasn't going to make teams before Beijing. I was like, oh, I just did one camp. I was still on scholarship with AIS. I did one camp. I did a half court runner versus Susie in my first drill as an Opal squad member, like, you know, just petrified of Susie. Yeah. Just because of, you know, her career and her resume. So chucked up a half-court runner in a drill just because I didn't want to be guarded by her. Isn't that crazy? Um, and then, like, you know, five years on, I, I just played my second year in France. I came back and I felt really good. I felt like, yeah, this is my time. I'm going to really have a red-hot crack at this Opals team. And then Brendan Joyce cut me um, after, like, the first camp. After I, I'd just come back from Europe, I was shooting well. I actually trained, I thought, reasonably well at the camp. I felt quite confident. I'm not an arrogant person, but I, I felt yep. quite confident that, you know, I've done enough to make it to the next camp for sure. Yeah. You know, it's quite early days. You know, the World Cup was in Turkey that year um, in 2014. I was like, cool, all right. Um, and I remember like a few days later I was sitting in the Coles car park with only had one dog at that time. I know, crazy. <laughs> Whoa. Crazy. Who is that girl? So Coco and I were sitting in the Coles car park. I was playing for the Hobart Lady Chargers yeah. at the time, which <laughs> is an interesting name. Um, and <laughs> maybe edit that out or not, whatever. Um, and, yeah, he called me 
and was like, oh, we're going to cut you from the squad. And I was livid, Mm -hmm. like absolutely devastated. And it was like a, oh, she's still in there and I'm not. Like that's, you know, oh, my gosh. Like I was just overwhelmed with every bit of emotion. Like I, I couldn't, I didn't understand it. It was out of my control. I was, I felt like I was getting punished. Like yeah. I, I just was so overwhelmed with emotion that I sat in the Coles car park, pretty similar to I Pearl know. here, She's and like just had a good old you. whinge. Yeah. And um, all the que- oh my gosh, Pearly. She's having. She's she's agreeing with this as being she a is. hard Let time. Let me just for give you. her a bottle. No, you're good. We can pause this. I'll oh, just keep it rolling. She'll just have a feed while I'm talking. Look at her. Here we go. She was hungry. Yeah, that's all. I yeah. get like that when I'm hungry too. Yeah, yeah. honestly, same. Well, oh, that sunlight is just. I can see that bat in that cave so clear. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I was sitting in the car. Coco's like, you know, dogs just get it. So she yeah. kind of like came over to me and um, she kind of consoled me a little bit. Yeah. I gave her a big fluffy hug and. I sat there for about 30 minutes just like, oh, my gosh, I just I am nothing. My self-worth is nothing. I'm so embarrassed. Like mm-hmm. I never want to see anyone again. Like this is so humiliating yeah. um, to get cut this early when I really thought yeah. that this was my time. And so like I, I went through like two weeks of just really grieving. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you have to really bring yourself back to a space where you're like, actually, I am worthy and my, my, my whole life and my self-worth isn't determined by basketball. And, mm-hmm. you know, that wasn't the first time I had to come to that conclusion. It happens multiple times and has happened in my career where you have to just really bring yourself back to a point of actually, you know what, like myself, where I'm okay. Like I'm a, a good human. Uh, basketball isn't my life. It's what I do. Mm-hmm. And my self-worth shouldn't be um, dropped because I've lost a game or I haven't played well. Or yeah. And we battle that all the time still to oh, this yeah. day. Like mm-hmm. preach, honestly. Yeah. Like we all battle that at some point in time if not multiple, multiple times Seriously. in our careers. Seriously. So in that moment I was really devastated, took two weeks to just cry it out, and then we ended up like having some success there um, with the Hobart lady charged me on the South Conference yep. with the sea ball, mm-hmm. um, and I was playing quite well. And in the meantime the Opals had had two pretty ordinary trips to like tours to Japan and one to like Belarus, Europe, where mm-hmm. I think Maggi ate some pink chicken. Like, so it just wasn't great. <laughs> I just always remember her face when she said, I think it was her birthday and, and they're in Belarus and she's been given raw chicken like and ate it. Like you oh could not, like, happy birthday, babe, have some salmonella. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyways, so after they got back from that tour, they made some cuts and then um, I think that was the moment where Lauren had to retire as well. Um, because of injury in 2014. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I got to play with her in 2013 in a couple of Oceania games versus New Zealand, which was really cool, Mm -hmm. although I played 90 seconds with her and got an offensive rebound. She was triple teamed and I had an open lap and I passed the ball and she was like, shoot it! I was like, oh, sorry, Lauren. (laughs) My bad, my bad. (laughs) Yeah, so I did get to experience, you know, pre-retirement Lauren and post, which is really great. Um, Anyways, back to my story. So then, yeah, uh, Chaka rang me up and was like, oh, we're going to sleep for the World Cup team. I was like, what? (laughs) Say what? Okay. (laughs) And then I've been a part of the team ever since. So Holy crap. um, So, yeah, it's a pretty long stint, but I never take it for granted. And Mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, like it's like I almost work harder to maintain my spot because I never wanted to feel on the outer again because I'd done enough years on the outer and I just I didn't want to ever feel that again. Yeah. You know, I – so I, I roomed with Kayla at this last Did World you? Cup. Yeah. Huh. For anyone that didn't Crazy. know, Kayla, we roomed together. <laughs> didn't even notice. And I, like, your commitment to what you do um, is, like, quite incredible because, like, people can get complacent, you know. Like, oh, absolutely. And the complacency, like, I've never seen such an opposite version of that. That was good English by me. But <laughs> someone who is, like, so committed to what they do and yet so driven even though they've achieved all of these things. And when you were speaking before about um, not defining your self-worth by basketball, I like – I, I, that's something I struggle with last week in my game. Like this is, these are things that we go through as athletes because we, we strive for the best always, right? We hold ourselves to this super, super high standard. Super ridiculous high. Yeah. And we're always comparing ourselves to like past, previous, future versions of ourselves, other people, blah, blah, blah. Always. But the, the, the other side of that, it means we have low lows and, how, where, at what point did you kind of figure out or learn maybe some coping mechanisms to kind of center yourself to like, I am more than this basketball game? Like, how did that kind of come about? And then how, how are you continuing to grow in that space? So, um, great question. Lily. Thank you for asking that. Um, so in 2018, I played for the Dallas Wings. And mm-hmm. then in 2019, I went back for training camp and they made it out like I was 
you know, coming over, you know, as an international, they've got to, you know, pay extra visa stuff. And they were pretty adamant, like, yeah, we want her back. But I felt really confident that I was going to make the team. Um, again, not arrogant, just, you know, me. Confident. I'm just yeah. confident. Like, if I'm going to go over there, you want to, you know, have, you got to have a bit of mm about you, yeah, you know, give it your best especially shot. in the stage. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a bit of this. Um, bit of <laughs> um, and so I trained relatively okay and, like, didn't, you know, have any really worry about not making the team. And then essentially they, you know, told me it was a numbers game and, you know, I'm vet minimum, a rookie's cheaper was what they told me. Whether that's the truth or not, that's just what I was told. Yeah. Not a problem. Cool. I came home humiliated, completely hit rock bottom mentally, mm-hmm. probably the lowest I'd been um, because I I just I really thought that I was going over for good purpose, good reason, and I just I felt like I'd wasted my time Yeah. Um, and I felt my self-worth just completely just hit the most all-time low in my whole career. I didn't tell anyone I was home, although they would have known because it was posted online and I was humiliated. (laughs) And then um, because it hits the ego, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, You think one thing about yourself when you're feeling confident and then that happens, you're like, oh, my gosh, I am like the worst human basketball player ever. I'm going to retire. Starts with basketball. I'm the worst basketball player and then it's like human Human. life. Oh, my gosh. Everything just feels dark and heavy. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, came home, didn't want to see anyone, didn't really leave the house that much unless I was walking the dogs. But if someone saw me out walking the dogs, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going right there. Like, yeah. no, don't talk to me. <laughs> like, yeah. I just didn't want to interact. And that's, like, not um, like me at all. Like, yeah. I'm very, what's up? Yeah, social. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, for a good month or two, I really had to figure out that, you know, my self-worth isn't determined by that. And how I did that over time, that was probably the longest it took me in that moment. But it was just more just, like, giving myself some grace, like a grace period of it's okay to feel that hurt Mm -hmm. and now we bounce back. Mm -hmm. Like and you have to bounce back because we can't live in this space because you're miserable. Yeah. And it was just having an understanding and accepting that, yep, okay, that happened, that sucked um, and now we're going to move forward because that's out of my control now. What's in my control? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like that on the court when things happen out of your control. Like if the ref makes, you know, gives you a foul call, you didn't think it was right, well, that's out of your control. They're never going to change the call in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's next? You know yeah. what I mean? Like what what can I do next? And as I've gotten older and matured, <laughs> um, on the court matured, yes, not yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Um, off the court, you'd still I've, exactly yeah. <laughs> 13 years old. Yes. <laughs> um, I found that, you know, it's really about, Getting around everyone, just as a leader, especially like getting around people, you know, the power of touch, huddling all the time, giving people praise, getting people in positions to be successful mentally, physically, like giving them a nice assist, like that type of stuff just gets me really zoned in Mm -hmm. and gives me an understanding of, you know what, like I don't have to be doing the most. I can just really help other people. And that gives me like a real vibe and a real buzz. Um, And that's what brings me back to a place of, you know what? Whatever my stats are, whatever, like I just want to win and make people around me feel really good. Yes. So that's kind of where my energy is channeled to. Yeah. And that kind of helps take you outside of yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. I guess like the the question that kind of comes on top of that, right, is when or if have you been able to separate Kayla the athlete from Kayla the person and how do you balance that? Who? Like, what? Where? Yeah. Where is she? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> um, have I ever been able to do that? Or is it such a big part of your life that you would say it's part of how you kind of identify yourself? It's it's a tricky one. It's very tricky. I don't know that I've ever been able to completely separate it. I definitely have times where I don't immerse myself in basketball and I'm doing my other things like with the dogs and my skin baby, my fur puppies, whatever. <laughs> like I've just mixed that up, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I definitely, that is such an interesting question. Yeah. And it's funny because I speak to people often when we speak about the pressure of being an elite athlete. Mm-hmm. Like, what's it like to live with no pressure? What is it like? Yeah. Please, anyone in the room, tell yeah. me. Like, <laughs> yeah. What's it like to not feel pressure for the next thing? Mm-hmm. Like, I like pressure to make a team or pressure to do well or pressure to whatever, be yep. successful. Yep. You know, and in your career, you're going to have so many more lows than highs oh yeah but when you reach the highs because you've experienced the lows and you learn lessons in them because you choose to lose lessons yep. because you don't sit in them you learn from them yeah those highs are euphoric yeah so you chase that mm-hmm. even when you chase it again and there's more lows you continue to chase it and I think that's where my drive comes from because the feeling that I get especially playing with my opals girls yeah like to succeed with the opals girls it's like a whole different level of euphoria you know yeah. so um and then when we hit lows you know, we're hitting that together and then we're coming out of that together mm-hmm. so there's nothing quite like that you know from Tokyo to the World Cup just yeah. gone like that was just insane momentum for us yeah. like what we came from and what people 
outside of our circle didn't understand um, and will never understand yeah. what we had to go through it and had to compete in the Olympics with what the trauma that we had to deal with um, and then to come out and, you know, on home soil. And there was pressure at oh, home. Yeah. Girlfriend, you felt it. Yeah. There was so much pressure at home. Um, and I, I think that pressure got to us in that French game, that first game. Oh, yeah. And people wrote us off completely. I, people I were like, oh, off. repeat of Tokyo. And then as soon as you won the next game, oh, everyone's great. Yeah, it was so, so harsh. people can be really interesting in that yeah. space. So that's why in tournament play especially, like, you got to stay in your bubble. Mm -hmm. um, even just in athlete life in general, staying in your bubble, although, like, over a season is really challenging because yeah. there's a lot going on. It's a long time. Yeah. Um, but to stay as much in your bubble and in your circle as much as possible, know, know your people. Yeah. Know your people. That's my biggest advice to people because – you have to just be around the right people because, you know, mm -hmm. and if you are, if you're around people that try and like manipulate, that's not good either. No. You know what I mean? You don't want people to be like leeching and yep. you need people that push you in the right direction and mm -hmm. give you good advice, not blow smoke. You know what I mean? Yes. So yes. I'm just, I'm actually just talking a lot no, right now. No, so. no, no, no. This is perfect because <laughs> so when I climbing. talk about, yeah. <laughs> can I have some milk, Pearl? <laughs> <laughs> Take a milk break if you like. I might need a water break. Yeah, though. Go for it. Suck it on this bottle. <laughs> She's bursting this cup. Yeah, you and her both, yeah, actually. Yeah. But like, no, that's perfect because when I think about like, um, what you know, the question of, let's say Kayla and Kayla, the athlete, your buy-in and what you're talking about, like the experiences you have. If you're not completely bored in, you don't get that euphoria. No, and, absolutely and not. So to separate yourself from that almost is not doing it as much justice. Like it's yeah. really difficult to then be like, okay, well, I'm so in this experience and over a longer season, yes, it's different to like tournament play. Mm -hmm. and But that that kind of pressure and that kind of like buy-in, that's all the time. All the time. That's all the time. You don't like – and that, that's the crazy thing is I try to explain to people that when you're an athlete, even when you're not on the court or when you're not – I don't know, in the gym or something, you're still doing things to better yourself to get to a certain Always. level. And so that kind of turn or the, the off switch to kind of switch into a different mode of yourself, it's so rare because what we do is requires so much of ourselves to buy into that the, the, the ability the, to then have this whole different space is it, it's borderline impossible. Yeah. And when I when I had spoken to Panina about this, mm -hmm. actually, like she speaks really well about the importance of maybe it's not a whole different life, but it is um, a, a different kind of wavelength of your brain. And, you know, for you, maybe that's your dogs and mm. your beautiful daughter and your husband and the, the things that bring you down away from basketball. But that kind of form of identity, like we really do, like we have to buy in there to chase that euphoria. Mm. Like that's really what it is. Yeah, hey. absolutely. And also like when you're in those down moments where you have your, your you know, your mental break from basketball, yeah. you're having a mental break because you're about to come back into something else. Yes. So you're already thinking about what's next while you're on your break <sighs> yes. because you're taking a break from what you just did. Yes. So there's never really, a, it's never ending. Do you know what I mean? What's, Literally, So yes. you're in the mental break but you're like, okay, cool, I'm having a break because I need this because of what's next. Yes. It's crazy, right? That's actually insane because if you you were to explain that to someone who has a normal life job, they'd be like, oh, yeah, hey, I go on my six-week holidays or, you know, whatever. Like I know not everyone has a six-week break. I'm thinking of a teacher. But, like, yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's just so different that there's no off space. And, like, I, I think this is a very great segue for me to ask about your lovely daughter because oh. you, how you're able to create this, this, this space for another human – um, like how, first of all, how special is it now that you get your daughter to watch you play and do what you love, but then also have her while you are going through this crazy journey? Yeah, it's actually incredible and a really surreal experience. I've been really blessed that Pearlie's like a really good baby and she's sleeping really well for me and thank goodness. Um, because if she wasn't, there'd be a lot more bags under my eyes. And these lashes, actually, a single bag. these lashes are making it out like I'm wide awake. <laughs> I'm actually half asleep. Um, no, I've had really great support. Like my mum was down for the first. Did you just burp? That is crazy. Right into the microphone. Um, yeah, my mum was down for the first six weeks. Then my husband was down for his six-week school holiday break. Mm -hmm. And now I'm by myself until my sister-in-law gets here this week. So um, honestly, she just gives me a good perspective. But people ask often like, oh, my gosh, how do you do it? Have the same schedule and have Pearl? Like... I just, what's my alternative? Yeah. So I just do it. Yeah. And I've got support around me. And when I, before she was born, I, I just had to like really, you know, think about what life was about to be and just kind of plan in my head. <laughs> Shocker, me pre-planning. <laughs> um, 
And uh, it was like, you know what, I actually can't fail at this because I have so much support within my family and in the basketball community so that it's impossible for me to fail. I can't fail raising this girl, right? Yeah. And then instincts kick in too. Yeah. So there's that. And then, like, I take her to training now, you know, our team manager or, you know, Mia Murray was injured for a while so she'd look after a test when she comes to training. Like, she's looking after on the sidelines. I feed her. She sleeps for a bit, wakes up, has a cuddle with everyone. Like, she's just, you know... Wants to be passed around and yeah. not super clingy to mum, but I mean sometimes she is, which is also nice. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, she's just been a real dreamboat, and I don't really know how else to really describe it other than it's just you just get on with it. Yeah. Like every other mum out there or parent, um, single dad, single mum, married couple, whatever, you just you do it. What's next in life? This is what we're doing. Let's go. 14 flights in four months, hey? <laughs> That's crazy. Not a problem. Not, Not a, problem. a problem. Easy. Yeah. Easy. So it's just you just get on with it. That's as best as I could say it. Yeah. I, like it's it's phenomenal. Like it is crazy. Like I watch some – like I'm very blessed to be able to like kind of witness some incredible women – mothers in the league being able to do their thing and it's so awesome it is just so cool and like it really is the pinnacle of how bloody strong we are as women like that's just the coolest shit ever yeah and so I mean kind of dialing it back a little bit how so you did not give birth to Pearl, but not? actually I have a funny story. I have a really funny story. So while we were in New York at our New York camp, um, what when was that? That's September? No, yeah. September. I don't know. July was, last July. year, yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, <laughs> Kayla got up in front of us and she was about to tell us that she was she was going to be a mum. Uh, but I was kind of sitting at the back of the room with I think I was sitting with Ezzy and maybe someone else and she she pulls up onto the screen these ultrasounds and she was kind of like, oh, you know, like, and she started talking and as you know, like, I, I heard dogs are going to have babies, like just doing an Opal's we presentation like, for Coco's we so, litter. <laughs> there was a couple of us at the back, like. I think Cheryl so, thought it was for my dogs too, actually. <laughs> there was a few of us that were like not following. Like there was a, there was a massive gap, and we we're like, okay, it, either like she is the best looking pregnant woman I've ever seen in my life, or her dogs are about to have babies. And there was there was no other like I just yeah. couldn't I, we couldn't comprehend. And it wasn't until the end of like you started talking, as he's like, no, no, it's not her dog's baby. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. So sorry, I That's find not, that so very, very funny. funny. It is very funny. <laughs> explain explain to us, talk to us about how like. Pearl really came about? Yeah, so um, back uh, after the Rio Olympics, Kailu's two older sisters had spoken to us about wanting to gift us with a baby. This is quite common in their culture. Um, They've done it for generations and it's as good as verbal. They say, we want to gift you this baby. Great, that baby's yours. Mm -hmm. Um, And in the last couple of years, the Queensland government, there's a bill that's been introduced only in the last two years, which is crazy, that legally allows island adoption to be legal (laughs) and it just creates less barriers for people um, or for, you know, the kids that get adopted, you know, when they're older to get, you know, their birth certificate all sorted or if they want to get a passport or whatever, like they, you know, creates less barriers. So, um, yeah, essentially Serena Kailu's older sister, um, yeah, was pregnant. I got home from uh, my championship win last year with the Boomers Mm -hmm. and she's like, Kayla, I'm nine weeks pregnant. I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) Holy crap. (laughs) It's happening. (laughs) What was that feeling when you found out? Like when you were like, oh, holy crap, like yeah. our family's about to get bigger. Like so, how exciting. Well, hold that thought. So um, that only had uh, – Pearl was her fifth pregnancy and that mm-hmm. only had one boy and they really wanted another boy. So we were only going to get Bubba if she was a girl. So the boy one they were going to keep and, yeah, so yeah. we had to wait for the ultrasound, that oh you know, the God. gender reveal. Yeah. Um, and I had three – I needed three confirmed – ultrasounds to say yep that's a hamburger not a meat and two veg that is a hamburger in there that is the doctor's words she said we're just looking for a hamburger today because it really does it looks like a little hamburger so I was like oh my gosh I see it I see the hamburger no, um, too so yeah three times and then I was like okay now I believe it because yeah. I didn't want to get overwhelmed with excitement mm-hmm. and then be like oh actually it was just like a, a swollen little meat and tackle like <laughs> You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yep, three times confirmed. It's a girl. It's a hamburger, and here we are sitting here, four month old Pearly, drooling, and with bats in her cave, and just trying to 
I don't know, bite my fingers. <laughs> She's just amazing. And like I uh like I have seen Pearl at quite a few WNBL games now and I've I've watched um Marina play against you guys and she's just sitting in the crowd, like just kind of eyes wide open. Like dad's holding her. She's just kind of, you know, chilling. chilling. Like, there's a lot of babies that are, like just get a bit overwhelmed in that space. She's just at home. She's just chilling, having the greatest yeah. time. Do you know like- what's prepped her for basketball games? Having four dogs at home <laughs> bark at any given moment. Yes. She, she'll like jump maybe one out of seven times. Yeah. So the other six times she's like, oh, they're barking. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So like. What what noise was that? Like, she's actually – and the funny thing is, like, she's got really good hearing. Usually they do the hearing test and they say, oh, between five to seven minutes and the hearing test will be done. They've just got to wait for two green ticks yeah, yeah. to come up on the screen or something. And they put their little cute little muffs on her ears. It was so cute. <laughs> and she was done in ten seconds. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, sharp. Sharp <laughs> hearing, sis. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, she's um she's a dream boat. That's so great. And I, <laughs> you know what's so exciting now is like um, as you embark on this next part of your journey, she gets to be there every step of the way with you. And yeah. so this next, you know, obviously we still have um, a lot of the WNBL season to go and finals and stuff, but you've just signed to go play in the WNBA for Vegas. Yes. That's so incredibly awesome. Thank and you. And you have so many people in your corner that are just cheering you on and it's so great for not just Australian basketball, but like you've been killing it and you deserve this. So Thank like it you is so just. Much so exciting how like when does this when do you move over there how does it work moving your whole family over there and also like how how do you feel about the opportunity to go um back to the WNBA and then also Vegas is kind of cool you know yeah I know yeah we're gonna live on the strip (laughs) I mean fairly yeah on the strip yeah (laughs) um yeah look it's a really cool experience and um I never would have thought I mean, especially an international veteran out of the league for four years to get, you know, the contract that I um, have received and, and be able to go over there with my family and, and to, to compete in the, this league. Again, I never really, uh, you know, I did my three years there. It was box yeah. ticked on my, you know, goal list. Yeah. So it wasn't something that I was really striving for, like, got to get back to the WNBA. Yeah. I was quite content with, you know, postseason going to play for the Cairns Dolphins and <laughs> doing some house renos. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because that's we, what I'm doing. Literally, we spoke about this yeah. almost every other day, right. by the way. Yeah. So, um, oh, okay, Pearly, like just a little longer, sis. Just We're just real chatty. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you want another bit of milk? I can't whack my, my boob out for you, but I can give you some of the <laughs> I mean, that would have been okay, oh, yeah, but we would have been all right with it. Oh, she's got me caught. Um, all right. Um, question. Yeah, yeah so it, uh, it's really exciting and Kylo's resigned from work to be able to come over with us Yeah. because it was either all of us or none of us. I wasn't yeah. going to just take Pearl and not Kylo. Like, yeah. it's a long time. We're there for six months and, you know, I've just said to him, look, it's a little American holiday for you. Just, yeah. You know, we'll just go travel all over the place and get yeah. to experience America and... It's all paid for. That's Great. So, so let's do it. So, no, I am really excited to play with Asia and now Candice and be coached by Becky. And, yeah. um, you know, a couple of the girls have slid into the DMs. We've had a few little little chats there. Excited for, oh, yeah. She can't excited wait. excited for Pearl Cuddles. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a really cool experience. And I'm just trying not to um, go back to my last WNBA experience where it wasn't a really good yeah. one. So, in my mind, it's more just like leaving that where it mm-hmm. is and just, you know, channeling what I'm feeling now and the experience and going over there and the confidence and, you know, staying really true to my myself and my self-worth and, mm-hmm. and just moving forward and enjoying having Pearl on the sidelines. And I think she'll be the difference maker for sure. Oh, it's so amazing. Yeah. I, I just, I, I think about like, I, I don't know, like that. I think about like what you have achieved and continue to achieve. And I'm not talking just about like basketball is amazing, right? Basketball is great. We love basketball. We'll go sports. But, <laughs> but, but I think about the way that you've been able to handle yourself in every different situation. Like, yeah, like think about every random type of basketball and life situation you found yourself in and you've had to adapt to that and you've had to change and you've had to, um, keep a level head and adapt and get better and grow and grow and grow. And that's such an amazing thing about you, Kayla, is you adapt and you grow in every single situation. And um, not many people could continue come to this podcast to do more that. often. <laughs> <laughs> Pump your head up. Oh my Let's gosh, go. I'm going to out the door. No. <laughs> <laughs> Knock the ball down and get my head out of here. I have been so excited to talk to you about this stuff because, like, really, like, I think about, like, that you were one of my idols. Like, oh, I got stop. to watch you and then I got yeah. to play with you and room with you. Like, that's the coolest thing ever. Like, you know how you were talking about playing for the Lady Child? Charges. Yeah. I was at the institute at the time and I actually played against you that oh year. <laughs> How can you 
you scored 30 on me one time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> was it in Hobart that time? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. think I remember that and then, game. And then even when you speak about um, like when you were in France and you were coming back, I actually – I was on a tour with the under 17s. I was and we, on the same flight we as you were on and Chris the same Lucas, flight. and then I signed with Townsend <laughs> after that. Yeah, because he was the coach. Yep. Yeah, I, I was on that team. That wow. was a full circle moment because I remember sitting in the airport. Well, holy shit, that's Kayla friggin' Georgia. Oh my god! Like, wow, well, I would have been Kayla. I was Francis yeah. still then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we were like, I, I still remember those oh things. Oh my god, such a full circle moment. Like you talk about the full circle moments you had with LJ being able to play with her again. Like that's. It's similar for me. Like, and I have those moments. Oh, shut all the time. up. Isn't shut it weird? Up. Like, it is kind of crazy. And I think about, like, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that my career goes for, like, continues to grow. And I get to have these connections with people the way that you've been able to connect with so many people too. And I, I guess, like, some of my last questions will be, like, about reflecting and looking back on, like, I don't know, younger you, your younger self. What advice would you give yourself? Um, or what would you tell yourself to expect or to enjoy more? Like what would you say to your younger version of you? I'd say don't let anyone determine your self-worth except for you. Multiple times in your life you'll be challenged by this, but don't let anyone interfere with it. It's yours, so own it. That's so brilliant. I love that. Can we cut that on a T-shirt? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I, I guess like now that you are this 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 role model, this person that people do look up to, how do you how do you think that people see you versus who you actually are? Whoa. And is there a gap or are you trying to work for there not to be a gap? I don't think there's a gap. I try and be just an open book and you know this, you yeah. know this about me. I try and be really authentic and honest and open and honestly I could talk about any topic with you, like nothing phases me. I, I'm just really I try and be as open and honest as possible um, about my life, about my experiences to try and help others in their life and their experiences because there's a lot of similarities, you know, especially yeah. these young kids coming through and, I want to share with them like the hard times more than anything yeah. because that's the stuff that they've got to work through where they learn the most about themselves to get to those euphoric places of success yeah. if they want to get there. Yeah. Because just because you go through lows doesn't mean you get to those euphoric places. You yeah. Know? Yeah, no, I completely understand what you're saying. Yeah, D- don't you agree? She totally I does. Know. It's you totally... realize every time you've said something like super click worthy, she's been like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> um, just a few more questions. Not a problem. I-, I think of um, like – Ah, uh, female sport and being a female athlete. What is one of the biggest things you want to see change in the space that we call like female sport? Like, is it is it the the equality gap in a lot of spaces? Is it the recognition? Is it pay? Is it what does that look like for you when you're thinking about equality yeah. in women's sport? It's everything that you've just said. But the element of being a female athlete, there's always a huge element of reminding people that you're there. And I hate that. Mm -hmm. I hate that we have to remind them that we're there and Mm -hmm. that the grind of like, hey, we're female athletes, like don't forget about us. Like I hate that. So I'd love to be able to remove that completely Mm -hmm. for us females in all aspects of life, sport in particular, because we're sports people, to not have to like tell kids growing up, you know what, you're, you want to be a, a sports person. Oh, you're a female though. So an element of what you do is working hard in your yeah. field, but there's also an element of grinding to show people that you're still there and reminding people that you're there. And that sucks. Yeah. Like we shouldn't have to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's really, that's a kick in the guts. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, we work hard. We get this. We win medals. We're international players. But hey, like we're still here. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like that's crazy to me, crazy to me that we've got to like beg for media attention. Mm -hmm. Like what? I know. Wild. Blows my mind hole. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So I really hope that that's eliminated. Yeah. Just like the things that you said are, you know, slowly but surely. I did read somewhere that in like 2050 it'll be (laughs) – I was like, oh, Are boy. Still playing, well, I mean, maybe I'll keep doing Pilates. <laughs> maybe I'll be. <laughs> no. With the Pilates, yeah. she'll be going. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'll be very well retired <laughs> with my 50, 11 children. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's one thing I'd love to eliminate, just the, the aspect of the grind for female athletes because you want to grind to succeed in your sport and not have the element of reminding people you're there. Yeah, no, absolutely. I talk about how one of the added stresses that we have as females is – we're doing this, you know, incredibly demanding thing with our bodies and our minds every day. Mm-hmm. But we also have the added demand of not being recognized and the financial burden that comes with that. And it, it is getting better. And I mean, like there's a lot of women that still have to work full time and all mm-hmm. of that jazz. But I, I would love to see us in a space where that 
at least that pressure is alleviated. Yeah. Um, because that just adds another weight to the things that we have to think about mm-hmm. and that we have to process. And I, I guess that like when you think about, I, I don't know, the things that we have to deal with every single day, mm-hmm. you don't want to have to think about like, you know, being able to provide for your family. Like that mm-hmm. should be, it should in theory be something that we should be able to do without thinking about. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess like over like even my career, like the short career that I've had so far, it has gotten better and I can only hope that it continues to grow in that space. Uh, I guess for you my question would be how or what would you say to younger boys at, to try and get them to, I guess, support and equally treat their female athlete counterparts, whether that be professional men that play sport or that is the younger generation coming up? That's a really great yeah. question. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, what would I say to boys? Um, honestly, where do you start? Yeah. <laughs> like that's Because that's where the shift has to be, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. 100%. So I feel like this whole question is like, well, now I've got to start a whole movement here. I feel yeah. a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> If what I say will determine how the next generation sees women's sport. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go watch it. No. <laughs> Support your sisters. Seriously, I asked this question of um, Sam Froling when he was here. And oh, what did he say? He had a really great kind of view on the fact that, like, it, it's the product that people don't think yeah. of it as women's sport. Like just oh, one hundred percent product. Like. And we, although they say you know women play beneath the ring and men play above the rim, mm-hmm. like, I mean, we still have such high IQ. Like, come to a WNBL game, like you're seeing like the best of the best, the Opals, like, you know, yeah. imports from the States, like you're literally seeing such a high quality, high IQ game. Mm-hmm. You could take that into the men's game and make it more athletic, Yeah. Um, you know, as the men are more athletic and yeah. they're, you know, faster pace and they play above the rim. Um, but I love our game. The women's game is beautiful. So yeah. I would just, you know, I don't even really want to say the word convince, but I would just challenge them to come and yeah. to a game because of the product. Yes. Thanks, Sam Froling. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, no, because I had asked this question of my brothers. I've got two brothers and mm-hmm. I, I had um, – they had gone out for like some sort of Bucks Day or something and um, they'd gone back to a pub and they were at this sports bar and they, they got the sports bar to turn on the WNBL game. Ooh. And there was a bunch of people in the sports bar like, no, man, turn on the NBA. Like, And they were sitting there like – no, watch this bloody game. Like it's you. I promise you, you'll enjoy it. By the end of it, you had like forty like drunk <laughs> men <laughs> yelling at the TV, like yeah, this is great, like whatever. So I, you know, I I still think one of the biggest parts of increasing um, the way that we're seen is that shift is going to start with men. And yeah, 100%. I hate that, but it, it that's, that's where it is going to start. Gonna it's going to start with the fathers and the brothers and yeah. the friends, and it's only going to grow from there. 100%. Okay, that's a big topic, and I wish we did have more time. But uh, I, I did say a couple more questions. With the last one, this is my last one. This is my last one. What do people not know about you? Do you have a, oh. a fun fact for us that people just don't know or if there's a few people that know, just a fun little thing? Oh, okay. I know what I'll say. Okay. <laughs> so um, I actually jam out and sing sometimes with Kylo. Like, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually I'm just thought kidding. you were about to grab no, your sister's no, no. hand. Pearly actually, was going to drop and you were going to I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm not Beyonce, but I've got some vocals. So Kylie, like, jams out on the guitar and we, like, recorded a couple of things, but you'll never hear it. I <laughs> will try to convince you otherwise. <laughs> Maybe. No. So, yeah, I sometimes I do enjoy singing, like, um, just like around home and mm-hmm. just with Kylo and his family, they're a very musically talented bunch. And we, yeah, when we get together, it's nice to have a bit of a sing along. Sing along. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's I've just been asked deal. to sing at the Grammys. It's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> she was on Australian Idol a couple of times. Yeah, so some people call me Beyonce, but oh, no. They okay. get confused. Yeah. Like, Actually, Beyonce? I just did the halftime performance at uh, the Super Bowl. <laughs> you got to be better than Fergie. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> God. Please. Oh, my God. You'd hope so that bloody. Yeah, that's Her crazy. Oh, yeah. God. That's a whole other can of worms. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, we have covered so much, and I actually have a list here that I didn't even ask about. We knew but, that was going to happen. Yeah, though. I know. I did want that. Mm, you um, did, yes. But Kayla, we and me, I really appreciate having you. And I, I really, I've said this at the end of almost all of my episodes, but I really do mean this when I say like, God, we could sit here and chat for hours. Hours. That, like there is so many areas that we could go down, but like your story is so special. And the best part of it is it's like you've 
still got about a million more chapters to go and I can't wait even this time next year to sit down with you and be like all right tell me about the last year (laughs) it's so exciting that like you've already done so much right but holy crap you don't you're not slowing down anytime soon and I love that and like that's not just in sport that's in your life like you are growing you are like developing and you are always kind of ready for the next challenge and it's so awesome like and like look at this perfect little human you have here say something sissy She's no. like, no, my time is not now. Do you know what's funny? I will just say really quickly if we've got time. We've yeah, no, yeah, we're playing. So as soon as I turned 30, it was like, oh, Georgia will retire soon. Yeah. I don't see them doing that to male counterparts no. when they turn 30. It's crazy. The females turn 30. It's like, oh, well, they're almost done. Yep. No, oh, they're veterans. They won't be here much longer. Oh, they'll be out of the next Opal cycle. Oh, no. And you have one bad game. Oh, no, they've lost their touch. Yeah. It's terrible how women are treated. And so you've really got to have thick skin and learn to just ignore the comments. Yeah. So. Um, no, absolutely. Like I I do mean that. And like it sometimes comes from the commentators in our own league. I know. <laughs> like th- that's <laughs> yeah. seri- like seriously, it comes from the commentators in our own league and some people within our own league and even like players with in our own league trying to like tear us down which is just crazy and like I we let's get rid of that as a statement no one needs to slow down no one like you don't turn 30 and then like all of a sudden lose your ability to play basketball like I mean you're a walking example of that you've gotten better every bloody year and like that's seriously like if if you look at Kayla's career she's continued to get better every year like she's having like an arguably an MVP season this year and I just think that like that idea of like you have to slow down bullshit right bullshit oh she'll want to have babies soon so she'll probably retire but soon. why does that mean anything yeah i know she'll want to have a baby soon who cares like and like now you've got one yeah. <laughs> Psych, I'm still playing. <laughs> I'm still here. You know what was funny though? Sorry, last thing I know. No, 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 keep going. Keep so going. when she was like a few weeks old, I'd like be on the flights with her like when we first moved down to Melbourne and people were like, oh, my gosh, you're already playing? And she's only three weeks old. <laughs> and like when I couldn't be bothered to explain, I'd be like, yeah, thank you. so. Oh, you look so good. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that is so funny to me. I would do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't do have exactly to tell everyone. Thing. Thing. Look at my Instagram. I'll explain it on that. I reckon I'll do that when um, Marina and I eventually have children. Um and like say she carries and I don't I'll just be like yeah just get yeah, back to oh, it yes. Like, yes. <laughs> this is me yeah. <laughs> it was yesterday you know um but yeah. yeah no like I like I said god we we could actually just keep going like there's so much I have so much sweat dripping down my back I told you <laughs> we might need a towel break if we keep <laughs> going <laughs> Did I not tell you? It gets Girl, so warm. Why, why did, did I wear a hoodie? Should've why? I'm a rookie. Fake friend. Um, Holy. Okay, yes. Um, the sunlight's um, beaming on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, we appreciate you and I'm definitely Likewise. getting you back. Uh, like we we need you back here because there's so many topics, not just about your life but about life in general that we haven't covered and God, I can't wait for people to listen to this. Yeah, and, yeah. And we've made – we're pretty funny. So I like yeah. to think that there's some giggles in here. Pearl Always. has made some comments. and yeah, she has. Uh, <laughs> she has. She really has. And um, Kayla, thank you so much thank you for, for joining it. us. This is Annalie Maley with Under the Surface and we will see you next time. So <laughs> – 